the ice will have melted. Europa will have become an ocean world. After Mars, perhaps we'll come here and make this our new home. We could live in cities at the bottom of an alien sea. But David Brin thinks that in the end, a life behind glass may not be the solution. Now we're thinking of going to other planets. At first we'll arrive in spacesuits, live in domes, bringing our earthly environment with us. But eventually, people will want to get out of those domes. And part of that will involve changing ourselves to fit into new environments. Our ancestors evolved for life on Earth. But Brin thinks our descendants may redesign themselves for a future on other worlds. Human beings have been wonderfully inventive in the last 20 million years. And yet other species have not been idle. Birds develop lungs, which the air flows through from one side to the other, so all of the lungs are used. We only use about half of our lung capacity. If we were to just genetically engineer ourselves so that our lungs flowed through like those of birds, think of the thin atmospheres that we could live in. Wouldn't it be great to be able to hibernate like a bear? We'd be able to travel to far planets, possibly even far stars. And if they live and work in zero gravity, eventually they're going to get sick and tired of pulling around a third of their weight in these useless legs, which are only good occasionally for pushing it against walls. Why have legs if you're in zero gravity? When you could have two additional arms. Wouldn't it be more functional, jumping all over the place like gibbons? Can genetic engineering achieve any of these things? Who knows? We're just at the beginning of this grand adventure. But it's an extravagant version of tomorrow that we should be thinking about. Wouldn't it be a desirable thing? If they're happy, if they're creative, if they're productive, if they're part of a great civilization. Viva la différence. We can only guess at the future. What will our descendants be like? We'll have to wait and see. And where will they live? Because the only certainty is it cannot possibly be here. It's not just that the sun will have seared all life from planet Earth. It's that the planet itself will no longer exist. Everything we know will have disappeared because in the far future, our sun will turn into a monster. It's going to consume the solar system. Its first victim is the closest planet, Mercury. Next, Venus is transformed into a molten fireball. And ultimately, boiled away. And still the sun grows. It's 160 times its original size, 2,000 times hotter. And its next victim is the Earth. Long since seared barren by the sun, the place we once called home now melts and is engulfed. 
Seven billion years from now, the Earth will be gone. For us today, one question remains. Is the future of our planet also our future? Can we really survive the death of planet Earth? Look at where we stand today. Look at how far we've come. Compared to the world of a hundred years ago, we're living in a science fiction universe with skyscrapers a hundred stories tall. Who can believe looking at that, that looking forward to the next hundred years, there will not be a new branch of human civilization on Mars. And look back a thousand years now. The world lit only by fire. Who can say that a thousand years from now there will not be hundreds of new branches of human civilization filling out worlds on orbiting hundreds of stars in this neck of the galaxy? Some people think that we're living at the end of history. But I couldn't disagree more. I think we're living at the beginning of time. We're present at the creation. It's a glorious time to live. For all we know, we might be the only life form in the galaxy and the universe. If that's true, I think that really deepens the importance of the role of humans in spreading life beyond the Earth. If we're the only spark of life, then we certainly don't want that spark to go out. Our scientists today are already imagining strange and far-off tomorrows for our kind. And if we do survive, perhaps we will be there to witness the moment when our sun's transformations finally end. It was first the giver of life, then the destroyer of worlds. And now, it too is doomed. This is the sun at the end of its life. Layer after layer, it is blowing itself apart. Huge clouds of star stuff drift out into space. It's a slow process, it takes millions of years. And what follows is inevitable, the death of our sun. It casts off one final layer, and its spark is extinguished forever. So the sun will one day go out. Will that be a significant event to our descendants billions of years hence? I don't think so. They will have observed similar phenomenon on innumerable other stars long before that time. But if they did think about it, they would note with gratitude that their ancestors did not stay on that one little world and await their doom, but rather spread forth into the universe and made their life possible. No one can know our future, but our son's future is certain. There will come a time when we must leave our Earth behind. Our planet will be gone. Our home will be in space. <laughs>